Welcome back to Final Fantasy 16, where we are starting things off with a hunt. So, uh, you this cap's waiting for us. Oh, look how cool he looks. Knight of the Splendid Heart. Oh, we are going to mess this guy up. So, to remind you, we have... The best sword in the game. The Agota Damarum. Right, uh, the Twilight of the Gods. Holy moly. It's gonna be our Twilight in a bit. Man, this guy's so cool. Oh, my god, I love the dragoons. You know, aren't their abilities so cool that jump? Here we go. Alright. Let us end him. Let us end him rightly. That's, uh, that's a little Skullagrim reference there. Now let's do some damage. Man, it's going well. Look at this, huh? Holy <laughs> Holy. He's so cool. He's allowed to hit us. And, you know, it'd be okay. I respect his style way too much. To be annoyed by the fact that we just got hit. Look at this. Oh, it's glorious. Yeah, for sure. They they did knights really well in the uh, not knights, some um, dragoons. Really well in this game, guys. Just chunk away at that. Wrong button. Come on, where are you? Alright, last run, let's go. I mean, this, this has just been an absolute treat. This is, this is this is like a day out for us, you know that, right? This is you've been you've been working hard all week, and you know your mate says, "Hey, let's uh check out this new pub or this new I don't know bookstore, but you know wh wherever you unwind, whatever you do." Damn it! Dion would have been glad to have you back at his side. Yeah, he would have. He would have. But yeah, anyway, it's, a, it's it's basically a day out for us. That's what that was. And I think we deserved it. Come on. That was great. Okay. And Man. The fun aside for one moment. Time to get into a different kind of fun. So we're going to be going around the corner because uh, there is... Well, we're carrying up with this quest priceless. We have to look for some snow daisies. We believe there might be some in this Royal Meadows area. So let's... Uh, Let's go see. I haven't seen any of those beastly blue eyes. Let us go see. The meadows are vast. Where do we even start? Lute mentioned the coastline. We can start there. That's a good call. Let's 
so the coastline will be up this way. Let's check it out. Uh, anything there? Oh wait, down there! Oh, come on, you can't jump. All right, and we've got to throw down. You see them? I mean, of course. Uh, let's try everyone. We are here to pick flowers, not pick fights. What do you see, boy? Oh, come on, there's, there's a friggin' Minotaur guarding, guarding these flowers. Let's hope this is the last one. For real, huh? Way to find out. Okay, wait for it. Okay, let's go. Just chunk away at his life. Unload all of our life's problems into him. Oh, that was great. Okay, let's carry on again. Oh man, all my stuff is, uh, is on cooldown. Aha, there we go. Okay, not bad. Let's get these daisies. That was harder than I expected. But found her. It was worth it. They're beautiful. Do you think Jill will like them? She damn well better. She'll love them. Come on. Let's go. I'm just saying. Fought some dogs and a minotaur to get them. She really she better appreciate them. Now nah, she'll she'll like them. It appears my work is done. The rest, as they say, is up to you. Well, you and the skies. We wouldn't want another thunderstorm now, would we? Josh. Oh, he's great. He gets it. He understands that, you know, sometimes we need some alone time. So, uh, let's do that. Let's just stock up quickly. Ah, it's a dangerous world out there. And I gotta say, I'm impressed with this new sword. You'll not find a better price than that. Finished, are you? It is... Yeah, it's, it's good. We've only been in one engagement with it so far. Well, one serious one. But I think just having that, that little bit more damage just makes a difference. Hey, Jill. Jill. There's something I'd like to show you. There is? 
And where might this something be? It's, uh, not here. Now, I know this is sudden, but how would you fancy a trip to Oriflam? There are so many. This is what you wanted to show me. That and the, um, Minotaur corpse. I, I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. The smile on your face is enough. We've been worried about you, Joshua and I. Do you remember when I took you to Man's Hill? Or... <laughs> Try to. How could I forget? You saw me crying and thought a change of scenery might lift my spirits. In the end, it earned me a nasty cough and a stern scolding from your mother. But I felt wonderful nonetheless. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had no idea what I was getting us both into. But I couldn't bear to see you like that. Before we left, my chambermaid told me she'd overheard your mother talking about my marriage prospects with some of the noblewomen at court. They were debating whether it would be more profitable to marry me off to one of the high houses instead of saving me for the ducal line. No one thought to ask me what I wanted. I was nothing to them. A pawn at best. I felt so trapped. So lonely. I didn't know. But I wasn't alone. You were there. Your hand in mine as we ran for those oaks. And I knew then, no matter what happened, I would be all right. I'll never forget that feeling. Before we broke camp, the morning after the storm, do you know what I did? No. What? I slipped away from my governess to climb the tour. And from there I saw a sea of petals, all reaching for the sun. And I realized... No matter how terrible the night, dawn would always come. That, that you... That you would always come for me. And you have. Again and again. Where do you see us? When all this is over? Not a good question, Clive. Not a good question. I don't know. Not here, though. I think I've outgrown the twins. After everything we've been through, the realm just seems so small. I'll need some space to spread my wings. Then... That's what you'll have. And I'll stop at nothing to see that you do.
never was much good at garlands. But it'll have to do. I'll treasure it forever. Thank you, Blythe. For this, the flowers, for everything. It's exactly what I needed. You are my treasure. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you get ladies. Snow daisies and minotaur corpses. Real easy if you think about it. We should probably be getting back. I expect the others are wondering where we are. You're right. There's still much to do. And we'll do it together. Good stuff. Uh, we got that. And Shiva Kiss reduces diamond, does cooldown. Okay, cool. Jill has joined Clive's party and will remain with him until departing for Origin. Okay, that's cool. So... Wait, has she replaced... Has she replaced Joshua? I mean... How do I feel about that? That might be okay, right? Okay, so we want to be heading down there now for Three's company. So let us head over to Boklad. Okay, so this quest has us meeting Havel in Randella. That can't be Rutherford, can it? Yeah, let's uh, see what's going on. Turncoats and cowards, the lot of you! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you shall have! Allow me. I don't need your... Please, uh, Field Marshal, oblige him. This won't take long. You're right. It won't. Men, finish him. Straight into the fighting, huh? Well, uh, let's keep it short as well, then. Oh, wait, who's healing people? would have died by now. So this is actually a testament to how tough they are. Enough. Good. A little longer than I'd have liked. Field Marshal Havel, I presume. Are either of you injured? No, my lord. You arrived just as our escort turned on us. Fucking traitors! I'd heard reports of soldiers in the outlying regions abandoning the oaths they swore. But I hadn't thought the corruption had reached so close to the heart of the Republic. 
It's a fucking disgrace. Your interfering old bastard of an uncle tried to warn me, of course. My lord, Marquis. Or is Sid the outlaw more to your liking? Call me what you want. It doesn't change who I am. Or the urgency of the message I bring. My uncle has a plan to right the realm, and he needs your help to see it through. Before I agree to anything, I'd have you answer one question. What do you stand to gain from all this? I won't deny that I might benefit from further chaos. But I seek a new beginning for all of us. And while the choices I've made may not always have been the right ones, I know I made them for the right reasons. For so long, so many of us have been told how we could live, how we could die, when it should have been our decision all along. Now we have a chance to put things right. But in order to take it, we must stand together. Even if it be beside those with whom we don't see eye to eye. Certainly not the words I expected from an outlaw. But perhaps your uncle was right. You are no ordinary outlaw. I'll never hear the end of this. All right. I'll start by ordering my most trusted guard to bring the Dalmechian fringes under control. Next, I'll make contact with my counterparts in the Imperial Army and see if I can't convince them to try and restore order in their own territory. Thank you, Field Marshal. But they are not the only ones we will need to convince. What do you mean? I don't doubt that I can bully some sense into a few generals. But those they answer to require a different kind of persuasion. And when it comes to honeyed words, well, we will need an envoy. One who can court even the most stubborn of statesmen. You, perhaps. I'm flattered. But I'm no diplomat either. And I have other problems to attend to. What we need is a skilled arbitrator. And I may know just the person. Is that so? And would he happen to be an outlaw, too? Of a different kind, perhaps. Well, beggars can't be choosers. I suppose we'll all have to find a little of the outlaw in ourselves if we're to make it through this. Very well. Send your man to me right away. I shall. Uh, my lord Marquis. Your Lord Uncle bade me escort the Field Marshal to his manor in Port Isolde. And I will see that my associate joins you there. Very good, my Lord. Okay, well, I think we made a difference. Huh. An envoy. I'm not sure I'm the man to talk anyone round. I can barely convince my brother to take his medicine. No. This is a job for someone with experience. Someone like Quinton. I hope I can convince him at least. That's an interesting idea. Using Quinton. Let's see if he's up for it. Uh, where is he here? Ever since we stopped his Tarantino-esque revenge plot and saved him and his uh, the bearers under his care, he yeah maybe he needs a different kind of uh, motivation or a different kind of purpose. So let's see if he will help out. Come on, Quentin. Quinton, I have a proposal for you. Do you now? 
Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I mean, yeah, while you're at it. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. The people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so am I. And why might that be? What he's asking? How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about. We'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? You said yourself we're family. Don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? That only we are worth saving? Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves. And if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <laughs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Porter's Older. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Okay then, so back to the hideaway. Good news. The Field Marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has! I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Porter's Older as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution. And I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his. But yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle, assuming Havel and Quentin can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion. But luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward Rockford from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battle axe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. Oh, get in. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now, I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle.
Is that going to be now, do you suppose? And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. Oh, says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen, perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Oh, look at Quentin. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand <laughs> the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company were you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... How dare you? <laughs> you are not fit to breathe the same air as this fine, upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! <laughs> Once more unto the breach. They've, they've got a dialogue going on, for sure. <sighs> Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, Show them that we walk it ourselves. Then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands. But the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? Uh, what's he got in mind? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, Mike Will. I love how Quentin's just standing there in his just regular get up. Well, my boy. The stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities. That you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall. And there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I uh, want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. Oh, nice one. Try Unity Accord. Displayed in Clive's chambers, okay. And Breath... Uh, oh, that's, for, that's for Odin ability, okay. Well, I mean, that was a damn good run. And in terms of side quests, I believe we are actually all up to date. But that doesn't mean we're entirely done, because there are still one or two things that we need to uh, sort out. So, I believe it's over here. 
There is a mark that we've been walking across, walking past that guy, that big behemothy thing. Just look at him, standing there judging us for avoiding him. Well, God damn it, we're not avoiding him anymore. Hey, buddy. We wanted to say hi. We have the Behemoth King. Here we go. Here we go. Guy. He's got all the spells in that. Did I use Garuda's Velocity to pull down? Wasn't even planning on doing that, but okay, I'll take it. There we go. Holy moly, did I almost die? I mean, wow, that could have been interesting. Big stuff. And then hit him with the good stuff. Damn it, I thought he duck down the way for that Okay, just keep chunking away. Okay, let's go again. And let's remind ourselves, this isn't like the Behemoth Duke. Or the Behemoth Jack, this is the Behemoth King. So, he is that tough. But thankfully, so are we. Holy moly, look at this, huh? He's just lighting the place up. Oh my days! Just that rain of fire ability is just... Okay, let's close the distance. GEEs. Oh, actually, one thing I need to be mindful of. I don't want to, uh... get out of the, um, zone of control. Alright, let's go! 
Will this be the one? Could this be the one? The one where we finish him? Let's go Phoenix. Chunk away that life. Let's go Bahamut. Oh, good damage. and hit us with the apocalypse. Jesus. Let's close the distance. Oh, there we go. Notorious Mark slain. No more Behemoth King. And we get some orichal come for that. Awesome. No match for you, I told God. <laughs> well done, us. Well done. Anyhow, I think that has been a very, very good run. So we'll call it a day there. Guys, that is all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you next time.